sing, and, and hey, man, I might even sing myself if I... <laughs> but we'll come on now, if you will, to the folks from uh, uh, Kentucky. the God of their choice, but salvation still comes in one name. That name is Jesus, the sweet rose of Sharon, the spotless and pure Lamb of God. Jesus, the Lion of Judah, the promised Emmanuel, God's Son. Jesus, my Lord and Creator, This world's only Savior, Jesus, what a wonderful name. All the great leaders who sleep in their graves, one day will bow and proclaim that he's Lord of all glory, the crown king of kings. All creation will thunder his name. That name is Jesus, the sweet rose of Sharon, the spotless and pure Lamb of God. Jesus, the Lion of Judah, the promised Emmanuel, God's Son. Jesus, my Lord and Creator, who witnessed and conquered the grave. Jesus, this world's only Savior. Jesus, what a wonderful name. That name is Jesus, the sweet rose of Sharon, the spotless and pure Lamb of God. Jesus, the Lion of Judah, the promised Emmanuel, God's Son. Jesus, my Lord and Creator, who witnessed and conquered the grave. Jesus, this world's only Savior. Jesus, what a wonderful name. That name is Jesus. What a wonderful name. What a in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah. I'm saved, saved, saved by His marvelous grace. 
I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way. Like a bird out of prison that's taking its flight. Like a blind man that God gave back his sight. Like a poor wretched acre that's found fortune glad that I found out he would bring me out through faith in his name. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by his Show me the way. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way.
God for the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's what my hope is in. That's right. Isn't that great? Those yeah. young people Amen. singing for the Lord. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. I really do. Thank you so very much for coming, Amen. driving all that way just to come here and sing to us. What a blessing you are. Amen. I thank you for coming. <clears throat> all right. I think it's preaching time. I I like preaching. You like preaching? Hey, man, preacher, I like preaching. Okay, just checking. See if there's only one here. Okay. The pastor of Walnut Gap Baptist Church is a dear friend of mine. I've known him for a good while. Hey, man, he came in here back in the 80s and stayed here for almost 20 years, and then he launched out into the deep. <laughs> hey, man, and, and he's still out there. I, I should say shallow because it's, up on top of the hill, not down in, <laughs> down in the valley. But my good friend Greg Reese is here, and he's going to preach uh, to us tonight. Come on, preacher. Amen. God bless Thank you. you. Amen. Amen. Well, as I said last night, it's good to be saved, didn't it? Amen. 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 It's good to know the Lord and the pardon and forgiveness of sins. Amen. Uh, as far as I know, this is the last night of the scheduled revival. Amen. You're going to glue that down, aren't you? <laughs> uh, let me say I have, uh, uh, you preachers to know, uh, I've enjoyed the liberty that I've had. Amen. And uh, uh, no way I can tell you what the pastor means to me. Uh, had good singing all week. Amen. I mean that. Had real good singing all week. Uh, good job tonight. Amen. Uh, before I lose my train of thought, let me get all my thank yous out of the way. Some of the best singing that we had this week was while you was coming in and shaking hands and mauling all around. Amen. As these uh, young people from here sang, amen, before the services. I really enjoyed that. Amen. It's good to have good singing. Uh, 
Uh, just a few things now. Uh, Bo, when I now call, some things that this man told me, taught me, that's helped me over the years. Now, I want y'all to know, good singing, okay? <laughs> Amen. But he told me one time, he said, don't you depend, don't you let your preaching depend on the singing. <laughs> that has served me over the years. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it ain't went so well. Amen. And you just got to go ahead and preach anyway. Amen. You cannot rely on the singing to prime your pump. Amen. 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 But it was good singing. Amen. Amen. I, I don't know. I always, uh, there's a few things. Uh, I said at the beginning of the week that, that, uh, i just like one time to get in a, a, a God-started revival that, that's just going along and, and nothing planned, no, I, and I have nothing against. I mean, you know, I, I schedule services, but just for one to take off on some Wednesday night and God start running with it, amen? amen. Now, I, I'll tell you something else before I leave here that I, I, I'd, really, I'd really like to be able to do. Amen. And both, both of them are, are sort of parallel. One time in my preaching ministry, I'd like to preach about the cross and feel like I'd come close to doing it justice. Yeah. Just one time. I don't know that you can, but just one time in my preaching ministry, I'd like to be able to preach on the cross and feel like I did it justice. Amen. One time before I leave here, I'd like to preach about the Lord just one time and just feel a little bit like I've done it justice. Yeah. Amen. I remember, preacher, when you took me down to Boaz, Alabama. That's in the 80s sometime. Amen. Uh, I don't remember what year, but I remember. And I remember going to first camp meeting and I never was there. Amen. And as just a young Christian, I tell you what impressed me. Amen. It wasn't behind the pulpit. Amen. But underneath that, whatever you want to call that thing, amen, it was outside and draped across the back of that structure was this big old banner that said, Sir, we would see Jesus. Amen. 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 If we need to see anything, we need to see Jesus. Amen. If you have a Bible with you tonight, thank you one more time for the invitation to come. Uh, Matthew chapter number 14. Matthew chapter number 14. Well, the boy may preach all over the chapter tonight, but I'm only going to read two verses. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter number 14. If you have a Bible there, and while you're sort of thumbing, now that's where I'm going to be, and I haven't been, I don't usually turn folk, but find John chapter number 20 if you will, and we'll read some there after we read Matthew chapter number 14, or at least two verses of it, and we'll read John, and then we'll come back to Matthew. But in Matthew chapter number 14, the Bible said this, the Bible said at that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus, and said unto his servants, this is John the Baptist, he is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Now, it's not part of the message. I don't know, some of you others might know, I don't know that it's ever recorded in the scriptures that Herod ever got right with God. Amen. I don't know that I'm not saying that he didn't, but I don't know that it's ever recorded. Amen. And I'm telling you tonight, amen, still in hell, that's following him what he done to John the Baptist. Amen. It's tormenting him tonight. Amen. What he realized, what he done to the man of God. Amen. It, it, it is forever going to torment him if he didn't get right with God. Amen. But I want to preach tonight, if the Lord had to be our help, I want to preach on the thought there in verse number 1. The Bible said at that time, Herod the Tetrarch had heard of the fame of Jesus. I want to preach tonight on the thought about the fame of of Jesus. Amen. The fame of Jesus. Now I wanted to read you a couple of verses in John chapter number 20. Amen. John chapter number 20 verse number 30 and verse number 31. 
The Bible said this, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of His disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. Amen. See, the reason God had what Jesus did was recorded was so that you and I could believe that He's the Christ, the Son of the living God, and in believing that, we could be saved. Amen. We could have life through His name. Amen. And then I wanted to read you one more. John chapter number 21. Amen. John chapter number 21. Uh, And then I'll get back to Matthew and verse number 25. John chapter 21 and verse number 25. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Amen. That's written by the man named John that was called in the very early stages of the ministry of Jesus Christ and accompanied him, I dare say, everywhere that he went. And if anybody had known all that Jesus did, if you will, John had known, and he come to the conclusion, if we'd try to write her down, amen, he said, I suppose that the world couldn't contain the book that would be written, amen. No wonder, no wonder there's a fame about the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. I'd like to try, I'd like to try as much as an old sinner boy saved by the grace of God can. I'd like to preach just a little bit tonight about the fame of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me have a word of prayer. Father God, as we come and we bow before Thee today, Father, I thank You for the opportunity and privilege to pray. Thank You for the service that we've had thus far. Thank You for this good singing. I thank You for the time of fellowship that we've had, God, down through the week and being able to come home. And Lord, for allowing us to be able to preach. God, I pray we'd be able to preach the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ tonight. Help us, Lord, to get across to folk how wonderful and how lovely that you are. Please lead, guide, and direct. Give us unction from on high. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. And amen. Amen. If you will, I I, I won't preach tonight on, on the thought of the fame Amen. Of Jesus Christ. We're living in times, amen, where it don't take much, amen, for people to get fame. Amen. Amen. I mean, really what I want to sort of say about that, this world is plumb wacky. Amen. I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? They will call folks heroes that shouldn't even be called heroes. Amen. I mean, because they can dribble a basketball or dunk a basketball, they get entered into a hero category. What in the world makes that a hero? Amen. I don't mean anything about this. I'm a little old short fella. Amen. But I'm telling you, they'll talk about somebody dunking a basketball, and I'm thinking, you're, you're seven foot tall. You ought to be able to dunk a basketball. Amen. Amen. There ain't nothing amen, spectacular about that. Amen. If you can throw a long pass or run for a touchdown, they'll make you a hero anymore. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, You donate a certain amount of money or something, they'll make you a hero. We got our heroes, we got our, if you will, our favoritism in the wrong areas tonight. And I want to say to you tonight that they ain't nobody more famous than Jesus tonight. Amen. They ain't nobody that's ever done more than what the Son of God has done. Amen. I'm telling you that, amen, old John said if it had been a written down, we'd still be reading the books. Amen. We'd still be reading about what he's done. Hey, let me let you in on a little bit of secret. He's still doing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Some of them get their 15 minutes of fame and they disappear if you will. One hit wonders is what they used to call them. Amen. I'm telling you, he's still working. He's still doing. He's still getting fame. He's still saving sinners. Amen. He's still coming up the hollers and the hills of West Virginia and finding and lost men, women, boys, and girls and born in them again by the Spirit of God. Let me say point number one in verse number 12. Amen. And his disciples, that's the disciples of John, 
came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. Number one thing about, amen, the fame of Jesus. Amen. Let me let you, He's the caring one tonight. Amen. I mean, here these boys are. Amen. They probably are thinking there ain't nobody in the world. Amen. Cares what happened to John the Baptist. But somebody said, hey, there's one that cares. Amen. There's one that cares what happened to him. And there's one that cares about knowing about our broken heart. We'll take it to Jesus. Amen. Jesus cares tonight. When you get bad news, He cares tonight. Amen. The folks you live around may not care, but Jesus cares tonight. Amen. Amen. Hey, that makes Him famous. Amen. Whenever they dump, hey man, I'm not talking about a shovel load. I'm talking about a dump truck load. And they dump it on you. Isn't it good to know you can go to Him. Amen. And pour your soul out. And I don't know how to explain it. you got to have been there and you know that he cared. Hey the Bible tells you said, amen, casting all of our cares upon him for he cares for you. Amen. When they look you in the eye and say do you want me to go further just let him go. Amen. I'm glad you can go to Jesus. Amen. And he cares about our problem. Amen. Whether they be little or small. I'm serving a caring God tonight. Amen. Hey man, that made him famous to me. Hey man, hey man, hey that made him popular to me. Hey man, they used to sing a song. Hey man, nobody ever cared for me like Jesus cared for me. Hey man, y'all might get tired of this, but I've been saved for 30 some years and I'm still rejoicing over the fact that he come up there in the head of Campbell's Creek looking for me. Hey man, looking for me. Why? Because he cared for me. Hey man. He cared for me. And I tell you, amen, this is what has always amazed me. I do not recommend this. Amen. I mean, when you see somebody else doing something stupid, don't do what they did. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. I mean, you know, if you see somebody walk up to a rake turned upside down, they step on and flops them in the head, don't try to copy it. <laughs> amen. Now, what are you talking about? Amen. Hey, that night up in the head of Campbell's Creek, amen, they gave the invitation. I held on to the pew and I left out of there lost and undone and didn't realize the dangerous ground that I was on. But thank God Almighty, He cared enough about me, Brother Frank, that He followed me home. Amen. And he didn't give up on me. He kept dealing with me and working with me. Amen. It didn't take but a week, but it felt like an eternity. Until I surrender and ask him into my life. In verse number 14, point number two, hey man, uh, I don't know how to, hey man, I told y'all at the beginning of the week, y'all got my one, all the letters will be the same. Y'all got my one earlier in the week, there ain't no more, hey man. In verse number 14, hey man, if I can see this tonight, hey man, and Bible said, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick, hey man, hey man. Oh, you know what made him famous? Folks could tell that he had compassion on them. Amen. Hey, none of us that measures up. Amen. In one place it said they're like sheep, not having a shepherd. They're scattered everywhere. Amen. But he had compassion on them. He knew. He knew that they were lost. He knew that they were sinners, if you will. But he loved them and had compassion on them anyway. Amen. Amen. We live in a world that charges for everything. He never charged for nothing. <laughs> amen. Amen, amen, amen. Huh? When he looked at those multitudes, and can you imagine, it had been like one of them healing services down at the Civic Center. Pardon me. Amen. I'm telling you, they was the lame and the crippled. Amen. And when he looked, amen, he had compassion on them. And the Bible said he began to heal their sick. Amen, amen. Not making no big thing out of it, if you will. He just went to heal them because he had compassion on them. Aren't you glad he's compassionate? Amen. amen. Aren't you glad he's compassionate and merciful tonight? Yeah. Amen, amen. I don't know if this is proper etiquette or not, but I've done enough since I've been saved to send me to hell, if you will. Amen. But he's a compassionate God. He's not a whole lot of compassion in the world anymore. 
Amen. Amen. But thank God we've got a compassionate Savior. Amen. 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 Verse number 21, let me say this to you. Amen. You know why he's got fame? Because he's able to supply our needs. Amen. I, I emphasize this to the to my folks all of the time. Amen. And I think it still holds true in the gospel. Amen. In the Old Testament, God will use the physical to illustrate the spiritual, if you will. Amen. And in verse number 21, and they had they that had eaten were about five thousand men beside women and children, and he met every one of their needs. Amen. Probably most of us don't have any idea. Amen. Most folks don't have any idea what it's like to go three days without eating. What do you mean we can't go three hours without eating? Amen. Amen. Huh? I, I, I work in the steel industry. Amen. This is sort of a joke in the, amen, in the steel industry where I'm at. Amen. If you want to tell a truck driver how to get him the direction, just tell him the closest eating place he's been there. <laughs> Amen, amen. Huh? But he took that 5,000 besides women and children and they sat there. I thought about that. Can I rabbit trail just a second? Amen. My, 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 how we've changed. Yeah. Amen. Most of the time, if you keep them an hour and a half, they're getting so antsy, honey, you've got to tie them in their pew. Yeah. Amen, 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 amen. Yeah. Huh? They get so antsy. By, I mean, they I mean, they don't care. They'll be. You can sit back there and look at them. Amen. Amen. Our clock's in the back. Amen. I mean, you. They don't even really hide it. They're going. <laughs> Does he know what time it is? Does he have any idea what time it is? Amen. And they sat there for three days and for three nights up on the mountain listening to Jesus. Amen. 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 They didn't go anywhere. Amen. I mean, I'm telling you, this just boggles my mind. I mean, as far as I can tell, they wasn't none of them brought tents. They didn't bring sleeping bags. They didn't have nothing, honey. What they had was the word of God, the bread of life being spoken to them. Yeah. Come on. <coughs> I, I don't I really don't like doing this, and I don't know why I do this. Some of the best times I ever had was getting in a vehicle with this guy <coughs> and just letting him talk. <laughs> Amen. 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 He gets amen. Huh? I get I get like him. Amen. Him Emmaus disciples. Did not our heart burn within us as he talked with us along the way? Amen. There's something about you get saved. You like hearing the word of God. Amen. Amen. He, he was feeding them spiritually, but he's also able to feed you physically. Amen. He can meet your needs. When the devil tells you he can't, he will. Amen. Can God supply a table in the wilderness where well, you bet he can? Amen. Amen. He may have used it. Two boys had two little old fishes. Amen. And some bread there. But he didn't have to have anything. Amen. Amen. Till you know, I hope you're getting this. The fact he can supply your needs tonight. Amen. Whether spiritual or physical. Amen. There's nothing that he can't do. Just go home and read your Bible. He did everything. Amen. Verse number 25, if you will, somewhere around point number 4. Verse number 25. Amen. As he came down from the mountain and he dismissed all of those 5,000 and he dismissed his, if you will, his disciple. You know, he had never had an opportunity. I don't know how to say he never had an opportunity to grieve over John. Amen. Am I wrong? He went out there and all of a sudden the multitude started showing up. Amen. Amen. Now, I mean, he's the resurrection, honey. He knows he's going to see John again, but he never had opportunity to grieve, if you will, if I can say it that way, over John. And so now he sent away his disciples. Amen. And there he is on the top of the mountain. And the Bible said in verse 25, In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Can I say this to you? What I've experienced in my life, he shows up in the midst of life storms. Amen. When you're wondering where everybody else is, you ain't got to wonder where Jesus is. Amen. Folks may get tired of this, and I don't mean to strum just to 
things up and emotional. But I've never got over that day, hey man, down there at, hey man, at the hospital. When they getting ready to take my little boy weighing two pounds. And they getting ready to take him back in there into surgery. And I can remember looking at that doctor and almost begging him. Hey, let me go back there with him. We can't do it. We can't do it. I said, I'll stand in the corner. I won't say a thing. Just let me go back there with him. We can't do it. It's not allowed. Amen. And me and my wife and preacher Randy and Miss Shirley stood there in the middle of that hall and got a hold of hands around, if you will, and began to pray. And I'm telling you, not audibly, I'm telling you the Holy Ghost of God come down and spoke into my heart. Amen. And he said this, they can't stop me from going back there. Amen. And doors don't stop me. Amen. And he gave me a peace to understand. Amen. That God would go back there. God will be there. I'm glad he shows up in the midst of life storms. Amen. Amen. They thought they was going down. I'm sorry, John. First the water, then the microphone. I don't know if it does anything or not. I can't fix it. I ain't going to try, John. I done tried twice. Aren't you glad he shows up in life storms? Amen. Amen. Hey man, aren't you glad? Is it the McCamies? They might not originate. Aren't you glad when the waves are over your head, they're under his feet? Hey man, there ain't never been a storm too great for him. They tell me there's one brewing there on Mexico. Hey man, getting ready to come in. I'm telling you, hey man, if he is there and he wanted to, he could say, peace be still. Hey man, and that old wicked storm would just lay down. Hey man, be like a little kitten laying at your feet. Hey man, hey man, hey man, he's able. Got two more points and I'll be done. Verse number 28. Verse number 28. I'm I'm trying my best to talk about the fame of Jesus. Amen. Now I've heard preaching all over this, if you will, and I've preached it one way and I've preached it another way. Amen. But in verse number 28, amen, let me say this. Verse 28, the Bible said, And Peter answered him, I mean, here comes Jesus. Amen. Walking on the water. Amen. Now we've read it and almost come accustomed to it. But I ain't never seen nobody. Amen. I don't know if Baptist is allowed to admit. We say we can go to the coast. I've been to the ocean. Amen. It won't hold you. Amen. Amen. I mean, you can, you can, amen. Amen. I mean, you know, I don't have, you can do all your faith you want to, but it won't hold you. Amen. I ain't never walked on top of it. I walked down in it until I got afraid and turned around and come back. Amen. 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 But Jesus come walking on the water. Amen. Amen. Huh? And in verse 20, Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. I'm going to talk about the fame of Jesus. He can stir your faith tonight. Amen. You know, we can pick on Peter all we want to, but he's the only one that mustered up enough faith to say, Lord, amen, bid me to come down to you out of this ship on the water. Amen. I'm telling you, he's the only one, amen, that can get your faith up to step out on faith and do something for the Lord. Again, right, how the preacher shepherd, pardon me for using something personal. Amen. Uh, for 18 years I was here. And I preached and I filled in. I don't know. If you don't want to know this, y'all plug y'all's ears. But sometimes when you're an evangelist, amen, you can get one and run a while with it. I don't know if y'all admit that, but you can. And he started dealing with me about pastoring. Amen. I'm off for the Lord. I've got to praying and I got to thinking and I got afraid and I said, Lord, that means three messages a week. Are you kidding me? Amen. I mean, where in the world am I going to get three messages a week? Amen. I'm doing good to get three a month. Amen, amen, amen. Huh? And I said, what in the, how in the world am I going to do that? Hey, from now and then I think, I'm thinking about taking my, amen. I, I use one. Y'all seen that up there maybe. Uh, I, got them, I put them in books. Amen. Huh? And they're probably now, they're probably about stocked that high. And that ain't me. I'm thinking, God, you've been able. Three a week and plus. Amen. 
Amen, amen. He's able. When you don't think he's able, he's able. All he's waiting on is for you to step out on faith. Amen, 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 huh? Yeah, where in the world, Lord, am I going to get? Is there an internet search you can do for that? I don't do that, by the way. Amen. Why do that when you got an intelligent wife? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Amen. Amen. Last night, I can kid a little bit, can't you, Shirley? Amen. I don't know what this guy done to my family. Amen. Mark, I'll come in all tired on Wednesday. I'll do it just about every Wednesday. I'll come in all tired, and I'll flop down there in the living room, and I'll say, which one of you two is going to do tonight, Diane, you or Jessica? <laughs> and usually Diane don't say nothing. Jessica says, we ain't loud, we ain't loud. <laughs> Amen. You internet folks, y'all wouldn't, some of you probably wouldn't have any idea. <laughs> Amen. She said, we ain't loud. We ain't loud. I said, man, okay. Guess I'll do it. <laughs> hey, okay, okay. I'll, I'll rain. Hey, but aren't you glad he stirs your faith? Amen. Hey, man. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad there's some things in your life that you thought that you couldn't do? And it's amazing. It's really amazing. Hey, man. Oh, I, I, I very little do it. You young people, you got up here and sang. Scares me to death. I can hide in the choir. <laughs> hey man, I can get the back row on the choir. But if I want to sing, I'm telling you, I don't know where it goes, but every drop of water in me drains to my toes. Hey man, I get so dry mouth. Hey man, I don't know if I can even open up my mouth. That's how afraid I get. Hey man, but see, I guess the Lord called me to preach. Amen, amen. Okay, moving on. Last point so we can get Buck or Buck, Bo in here. That's my deacon. Amen. Verse number 33, and I'm done. I'm talking about the fame of Jesus. Amen. The Bible said, Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him. Amen. Amen. Saying of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. Amen. You want to know why he's saying? Because he's the Son of God. Amen. Amen. He's the Savior of the world. He, amen. They used to say in circles, He's 100% man and 100% God. Amen. He's the God man. He's God's own Son. Amen. Savior of the world. Everything you see, He made. Amen. 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 He's the creator of everything. Amen. Hey, that, hey, that storm didn't trouble him any. Amen. Those, amen, those roaring mobs didn't bother him any. Amen. Why? Because he's the Son of God. Amen. Just for the internet. Can you let me do that? I don't know if they're watching or not. Just for the internet. Let me say this to you tonight. Let me try to get my breath and let me just try to calm down for just one second. Amen. Let me tell you what he's the most famous for. He's the most famous for dying on Calvary and rising again the third day. That's what he's famous for. Amen. Amen. Paul said, I delivered unto you that which I also first received. How that Jesus Christ, how that Christ died for our sins. Can I take just a second? Amen. Almost done. Don't know, Bo, I, I, I'm, not as, I'm not as learned. I mean that for the depths as you are. But I tell you what the Spirit said to me today. Amen. Just very simply. Christ died for our sins. And He strove home our and it strove to me, and I don't know if it'll mean anything to you or not. It strove home to me that our starts with O. Christ died for our sins. Everybody in this building. You understand what? Died for our sins. By way of internet, I'm not going to do it. But I'm telling you, I could go out and stand outside that door. And I could say that Christ died for our sins and mean and incorporate the entire world. That's who He died for. It's not just us folks here in the church, but He died for our sins. He died for the sins of the world. Whether 
whether you'd be in China or Russia, whether you'd be in West Virginia or Cal, He died for our sin, for every one of them. They took Him out there, took Him down from the cross, and they buried Him. But He kept telling them, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll build it again. And on that third day morning, Amen. They went to the tomb and they heard that immortal cry, Why? Why seek ye the living amongst the dead? He is not here. He's risen like He said that He would. That's what He's famous for. He's famous for Calvary and He's famous for rising from the dead and the only thing else, if you will, that He's famous for is for saving sinners. Amen. Amen. If you come to Him, He'll save you. I'm done, preacher. I'm done. Now I got to go apologize to John. <laughs> All right, Lord, you did well. Amen. I appreciate the fact that Jesus died for our sins. It said, and Greg read. It said that that if if everything he did, the world couldn't contain the the book. That is not an exaggeration. You know, some people think, well, they're just saying that to em- no. That's not for emphasis. The truth of the matter is, the world cannot contain the knowledge of God. Everything, you know, in the beginning, He created it. So he had to be there for the beginning. Am I telling it right? He was somewhere there when he spoke everything there is into existence. The world was made by him. The world doesn't even know him. Well, I'm glad I know him. Aren't you? Let's sing together. Let's stand just just sing one of the old songs of the church together. You got something, C.T.? Number 27, let's just sing together. Somerset, Kentucky. Yeah. That's that's a long ways over there. Kentucky is one of the the longest way the states anyway. And that's a long ways over there. And they came all the way over here to sing to us tonight. I'm going to ask them to come and sing to us right now. Come on, if you will, and sing to us. so great to us. I couldn't tell you what all he's done for me. He brought me out of the hospital, I don't know how many times. Had several stents, three bypass on the heart. God just keeps on working. Keeps on keeping me. Keeps on loving me. And and they sang one verse there that said that probably should have went to hell for all my sins. But God said no. He said, Whosoever will yeah. call upon the name of the Lord yeah. shall be saved. Yeah. I'm glad I called upon him. Yeah. 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 That was the most and the best decision oh, yeah. that I ever made in my life. That's number one in anybody's life. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't, 
God is certainly good to us. I heard a preacher defining mercy and grace. And he said mercy was when God didn't give you what you deserved. And grace was when he gave you a check for a million dollars a side. Amen. He's been good to us. 
thank you folks for coming to sing. I, it, wasn't, that, wasn't that good? Amen. God bless those young people. I appreciate you. Amen for coming to sing for us here tonight. All right. From Zion Hill Baptist Church, Newton, West Virginia. Is that right, Brother Bo? Newton, West Virginia. Uh, it's our, our good privilege to introduce our friend, uh, Brother Bo Crawford. Want to come and preach for us just now. Thank you, brother. Thank you. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. Yes, sir. I'll give you a little hint. When you pull on the lot and you see them UK plates and you walk in the door and you see the banjo, you're going to have a good time. <laughs> you can figure on it every time. Yeah. I went to the academy some years ago when uh, some of the guys from Kentucky were up there and at that time, went to them and asked them if they had a room we could use. And they said, yeah, use the auditorium. And every Wednesday, we had church right there in the belly of the beast. People from all over the country. And uh, it was a wonderful time. All over the nation came there. And the believers, we, I don't think we ever had anybody saved, but we certainly had some wonderful services. I'm glad you're here. Friday night. You remember where we're at? Psalm 1. We're going to read that again. One of these days I'm going to try to read another one. That's enough. There's 110 words. And I'll tell you what, David put every one of them just right where they belong. He probably had some help. Probably had the Holy Ghost of God saying, put this one over here and that one over there. We'll read the first psalm, and uh, I want to read a couple of verses from Romans chapter 11, and we'll talk to you just for a little while. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Young people, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Be careful, very careful how you pick your friends. Amen. Be very careful how you pick your husband or your wife. I'll tell you what, 50 years is a long time. You better get the one you want to you wanna be with because uh, pretty soon that, that prettiness will wear off and uh, a lot of those things will wear off and you, you'll be sitting there uh, going at each other unless you really love each other. I thank the Lord for my wife and uh, I thank God for what he's done for our family. We, she's holding the baby, that's number seven. Uh, number eight will be here, the Lord willing, in November. Happy is the man whose quiver is full. He'll have to work till he's 150 to pay for it, but happy is the man whose quiver is full. All right, let's start over. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. He is delights in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's good advice right there. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit and his seed. His leaf also shall not wither. That's preservation. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Little 110 words psalm. Rashim, Rashaim is used four times in this psalm. That's amazing. It's only translated a handful of times in the Old Testament as ungodly. But yet right here in this little psalm, four times. Also in this little psalm, there's three ways. There's the way of the sinner in verse 1. There is the way of the righteous in verse 6. And there is the way of the ungodly in verse 6. Let me read to you from Romans 11.33. If you've got your Bibles want to look, I'm going to read when I get there. Oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Oh, the depth of the riches, 
both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be re recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. It's hard to imagine the wisdom and knowledge of God. If you go out and you pick up a butterfly and you look carefully at that butterfly and you think of who painted those wings. Little tiny tentacles, I guess they are. You can see the wisdom of God in that. You can see the wisdom of God in nature. You pick up an acorn from the ground. Inside that little acorn is all everything that's necessary to produce a huge and mighty oak tree. If we could read the writing, there's nothing in there to produce apples. It's not an apple tree. You see, in the Bible, whether we do it in West Virginia or not, in the Bible, everything brought forth after its kind. God's wisdom is beyond us. Blessed is the man that understands God's wisdom and God's ways and allows God to shape his life, to direct his life, to lead his life. Let's pray. We'll talk to you a little bit. Father, we stand before you. Thank you for the singing, Lord. Thank you all week, Lord. Father, I came here to be a help, and Lord, they've helped me came here to be a blessing, and Father, they bless me. Lord, thank you, Father, for the messages all week for Brother Greg. Thank you for his family. What an encouragement, Lord, they are to so many people. Father, we need your help tonight, and we pray that you'll give us liberty, help us to preach the unsearchable riches of him that loved us more than we'll ever understand. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In this little psalm, we've got the way of the ungodly, way of the sinners, excuse me, in verse 1, the way of the righteous in verse 6, way of the ungodly in verse 6. What I want to talk to you tonight is God's way. I don't want to talk about any, either, any of those. I want to talk to you about God's way. God has a ma way for man. God has a way for marriage. God has a way for the church. God has a way for the nation. God's got a way for the job, on the job, sanctification, salvation. And it would behoove all of us to know what God's way is in each of those areas. Amen. You see, if we look at God's way in this book and we say, you know what, I, that's good. But here's how I'm going to do it. Yeah. Friend, you have insulted the wisdom of God. Right. And like someone else, you have said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'll sit on the sides of the north. Be very careful there. Yeah. God knows exactly what he's doing. God said exactly what he wanted to say. And it behooves each and every one of us to read what God says, understand what God said, and direct our life according to the Word of God. Amen. That is the blessing that God has given to us in this world. Amen. God's got a way for man, and that way is by faith. I told you this week about some of the troubles and trials I've had in my life, and it would have really helped me out, Randy, if, if the Lord would have showed up if he would have come out on the porch and physically said, Bo, I'm here with you. Don't be afraid. Don't be, you're not alone. It would have really helped me out had he done that. But you see, the Bible says the just will live by faith. Right. 
not just when you come and accept the Lord into your heart and life, you're going to walk by faith all your time down here. And there will be many times when you say, Lord, give me proof, give me something, show me something, and you'll have to settle for faith. That's what God has ordained for man in this world. If God can't be believed, then we don't need to trust Him. If God has made a mistake, then we need to forget Him. If God is a, a, a true and able to do what He says He can do, then we just need to believe Him. Amen. Greg, it's not that hard. You know? <laughs> Love you, brother. Habakkuk's verse, Paul quotes it in Romans. Somebody said the just, if you want to know who the just are, read the book of Romans. An amazing book. Amazing book. If you want to be right doctrinally, if you want to know how to be justified by faith, you read the book of Romans and it'll tell you. No Romans, no Romans. Nobody who's right on Romans is wrong on a lot of stuff. You see what I'm saying? If you're right on Romans, you'll be right on the rest of the Bible. The book of Galatians quotes that verse from Habakkuk. If you want to know how to live in liberty and live without the law and anything tying you down, then you read the book of Galatians. If you want to know what it's like to live by faith, you read the book of Hebrews. That's the life that God has for man. Those who say, you know, uh, I, can't, I can't believe that, I can't, I can't go for that. Friend, you'll never be saved because the just shall live by faith. Everyone who's ever been saved has been saved by faith. They believed what God said and accepted Christ into their life. Secondly, God's got a way for marriage. God had the idea it should be between a man and a woman. I tend to agree with it. I tend to agree with it. Now listen, if you don't want to get married, if you've got a buddy and y'all like to fish and y'all like to stay in the cabin and y'all like to do that kind of stuff, that's fine, that's fine. Just don't get married. Don't mess with God's ordinances, if you will. The Bible, it's holy matrimony. It's for a reason. We used to believe in God's way of marriage. God's way of marriage it says, Husbands, love your wives. What's, preacher, you don't understand. She's mean to me. I mean, I work all day, and I come home, and she spent all my money, and I look for supper, and she's laying in there in bed. Love her out of bed. Love her out of bed. No, you, you don't understand. She's mean, and she... The Bible says, husbands, love your wives. Love your wives. Love your wives. Not your job. Amen. Come on. Love your wives. That's the husband's duty and that was God's plan for marriage. To the woman, the Bible says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. I said that and it is 2015, almost 2016. You don't understand, preacher. He said, dumb, if I don't go out in the yard and get him, He'd stay in darn ground. I, got, I mean, I can't follow a guy like that. The Bible says, submit yourself to your husband as to the Lord. We well, see you get to heaven and you say, Lord, I, 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 I did a lot of things for you. And uh, I want to know, am I going to get five cities or am I going to get two cities? And he's going to look back at how you treated your husband. You see, if you, that is our test. The test for the husband is loving his wife Amen. like Christ loved the church. Amen. Well, if I had a better wife, I'd be able to love her. Think of the wife that Christ got. Think of the church when Jesus came and died for her. 
Son, she was not spotless then. She was not wearing white garments then. If the truth be told, she had on the attire of a harlot. And he loved her. And he brought her, bought her. And now he's taken away all her sins. And she's going to be spotless, if you will. She's going to be dressed all clean and white. He did that by loving her. She can do that by submitting to him. That is the what God has for you in your home. You won't be hell happy in the home. Uh, people tell me all the time, you know, so and so, he got remarried, and I just hope that he's happy this time. Lord, can I say that? Chances are, if you didn't get it right the first time, I don't know of anybody that's happy the second time. If you've been married twice and you've been forgiven, don't let me hurt your feelings. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying if you've got a living wife, if you've got somebody that you stood before the preacher and before God and said, forsaken all others, sickness and health, (coughs) better stay with the one that God gave you. God's plan for marriage talks about kids. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Amen. I think America's kind of gotten away from that, haven't we? My dad had a treatment for that. My dad had a fist about as big as a half a cinder block. He told me one day, he said, I want you to come and help me in the garden. And I said, buddy, I have been to school all day. I think I'm going to play basketball. <clears throat> one hit me one time. Whew. My nose was bleeding. My mouth was bleeding. My lower mouth was bleeding. I went and worked in the garden. I forgot about basketball. <laughs> All the time I was working in the garden, I was ashamed that I pushed him that far to make him do that. Man, what's wrong with us today? What's wrong with us today? Children, obey your parents in the Lord. This is right. Don't tell me that God. you think God is wanting you to do something and your dad or your mom has forbid you to do it. I don't believe that way, do you? I don't believe that way. If, if God tells you, if your parents tell you to do something, God's going to be on board with that. It's the right thing to do is to follow your parents and to obey your parents. God's got a way for the church. Three verses, Matthew 16, 18. I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church. Whose? It's his. Preachers need to remember that, don't they? Preachers need to remember, especially Baptist preachers. We need to remember that it belongs to him. Ephesians 5, 23, Christ is the head of the church. We need to remember that. Yeah. Right? We don't, we're not holding a monopoly. We don't have St. Peter's chair. I don't guess we do. Uh, they don't have it either. <laughs> Christ is the head of the church. Amen. It's a very wise church that seeks his face. Seeks his face before you spend money. Seeks his face before you go into a new course of action. It's a very wise church that knows that Christ is the head of the church. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, he purchased it with his own blood. It was him that paid the price for the church. I, I wish we could get back to preaching Christ and him crucified, Christ and him buried, Christ and him rose from the dead. Too many preachers today are getting on there and they're trying to make a living for themselves. They're trying to build them a little dynasty like a Minotep or somebody. They're trying to make them a place, if you will, when they need to be doing the work of the Lord. I don't want a thing that the church has. Paul said, I don't seek you. I, I don't, I'm not seeking yours. I'm seeking you. Howbeit the more I love you, the less I be loved, I think he said in 2 Corinthians. God's got a way for working on the job. I worked in the mines, Randy, years ago. And this guy was, 
a Christian, and he everybody knew it. They came down there to where he was, and he was setting up against the stopping in the coal miner, and he was asleep. And they had to wake him up. And they said, you were asleep. You know what he told them? He said, I was praying. He had, the day is coming. He'll wish he hadn't said that. Right. The day is coming when he'd wish he'd have went ahead and quit and crawled all the way out of the mine rather than saying something like that. If you are a Christian, and you belong to Esther Baptist Church, do your job on the job. Don't bring stuff home that don't belong to you. Don't do that. The Bible said, I worked with them in the coal mine. They'd lay up on that boulder sun. They'd have him feet propped up, and the mine foreman would come in, and when they seen him, they'd jump off there, and they was a ball of fire. Man, they couldn't do enough while he was there. As soon as he left, they'd pile back up. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but doing the will of God from the heart. Wonder why people don't come to church? Because they work with Christians that are lazy. I hate a lazy Christian. Amen. You ain't supposed to hate people. I hate a lazy Christian. If you don't want to work, then don't get a job. If you get a job, then you do your job. If you get a job, you be faithful on the job. As to the Lord and not the man. We've done a lot of damage to people, guys. We've done a lot of damage to people. When they say, you know what, he's supposed to be a Christian. I want you to look at him. I went over to his house the other day, went in the garage, and there was that, and there was that, and there was that, and he stole every one of them. God's got a way for us on the job. When Daniel got on the job, they had to find something against Daniel concerning prayer and his God. Because Daniel was faithful in everything that he did. God help us to be like him. <coughs> I'm hurrying, y'all getting tore. God's got a way for the nation. We forgot, didn't we? The chaff takes part of the wheat. It takes part of the blessings. All that the kernel of wheat the nutrients and things that gathered up through the root. The chaff partakes of that, and it's absolutely worthless. They take the chaff, they thresh it, and separate the chaff from the wheat. Then they throw it up in the air, and they tell me that the wind catches the chaff and blows it away. America was blessed because of their relationship to the Lord. This country, whatever they're saying today, whatever they're teaching you guys in school, this country, people came here to worship God after the dictates of their heart. I want to tell you something. I mentioned the Jesuit oath of induction. I probably shouldn't have done that on live streaming, but, you know, it's awful late in life for me to act like I got some sense. <laughs> I've got books at home that go way back into the 1800s. And did you know that Baptist preachers in America only got to preach once a month? There was a time in America where Baptist preachers got to preach one time a month and they could not preach at night. It had to be during the daytime. That's how far we've come as a nation. The Bible says righteousness exalteth a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Yeah. Would to God. I, I'll tell you what, I love this place. I'm going to heaven. If I, This is not my home. I understand I'm a stranger and a pilgrim down here. I understand that. Man, I like it here. I do like it here. The world needs America. Do you understand that? 
You look what's going on in the world now because America is not taking an active lead. I'm not a warmonger. I'm really not. I don't think we ought to be over there blowing people up and doing all that stuff. But I think the world needs America in the world. And I know that America needs Jesus in the church and in the home. If we don't get back to where God, where we left God, friend, we're going, we're going to have some hard times ahead of us. The biggest storm in history is right now, I guess, coming into the uh, borders of Mexico. God's got a way for salvation. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Friend, I don't know what that does to your religion. Listen to me. We know where Buddha is. We know where all the prophets are. We know where all these people are. Jesus rose from the dead. Christ is the one who conquered death, hell, and the grave, and he's alive forevermore. The Bible said he's sitting at the right hand of God. Friend, listen, you need to get right on this thing about salvation. One's good as another just as long as you live. The second you die, friend, it's over. The second that you die, you better be right. If you don't have Christ in your life, you're going to be like that rich man that lifted up his eyes in hell and and saw Abraham afar off. He was tormented in the flame. Jesus, and I wish, you know, sometimes it wasn't so because this is going to cause the church a lot of problems in the future. This is going to cause the fundamental Baptist church a lot of problems in the future because Christ is the only way. The Bible is very plain about that. There's salvation in nobody else. If you don't come by Christ, you're not coming. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's what he said. Friend, I'm not making this up. I'm getting this right out of God's book. Jesus is the way of salvation. The Bible says in Galatians 2.16, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Salvation is in the Lord Jesus Christ. God's got a way for sanctification. Men have ways for sanctification. I ran into a crowd early in my Christian life. Seemed like they always show up early in the Christian life. Boy, except you pray get the Holy Ghost you're not going to do any good that's a hard thing to tell a Christian that's struggling with sin I run into people that told me well you, you don't have to put up with that you see you can be sanctified holy really what well you just pray and God gives you this second blessing and you'll never sin again. Well, hot diggity dog, where did I get that? i got to have that. That's man's way of sanctification. I wish that were true. I really do. Friend, it ain't true. Anybody here struggling with sin? Amen. 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 Let me tell you something. As long as you're struggling, you're doing good. As long as it bothers you. You're doing good. When it don't bother you anymore, no it's a danger signal. It's a red flag. Struggle. You'll fight. I thought, man, when I get old, you know, when I hit 60, life's over. You know, I won't, have, I won't be interested in pretty girls when I hit 60. It must be 70. And I have a feeling it's probably 80 or 90. God's way of sanctification is for you and I to learn to say no. Learn to choose better. You read Romans chapter 6, there's 23 verses. 23 is the number of death in the Bible. Sarah 
The wife of Abraham died in Genesis chapter 23. Uh, Genesis chapter 5, 3 plus 2 is 5, is the chapter of death. But in the book of Romans chapter 6, in those 23 verses, there's sin and death in every single verse. Some of the verses have sin and death. Some just have sin and some just have death. And the Bible teaches that my old man died with Jesus, was buried. It's dead. And I go out there and I think, man, now this is going to make a difference. I look in the rearview mirror and there he is right in the back seat. <laughs> hey, I thought you was dead. Get down back there. What, what in the world is that talking about? It's by faith. Do you feel saved every day? Are you lost when you don't feel saved? You've learned to believe God even when things are going the wrong direction. You've learned to believe God when things are all upside down. When the, when the light goes out and darkness is everywhere, you've learned to believe God. It's the same way with our old man being dead. That's a fact. That's true. When Christ died, he died with Christ. But we have to reckon that by faith. And what, what does that mean? Know ye, reckon ye, yield ye. What is it talking about? Let me give you an example. They came to Jacob and they said, Jacob, we found this here coat. It's a coat of many colors and it's got blood all over it. We don't know if it's Joseph's or not. Do you know how many years Jacob lived like Joseph was dead? He screamed and cried. His kids come out to try to comfort him. He wouldn't be comforted. Joseph was alive. He didn't believe that. He believed that his boy was dead. And it changed his life. Sanctification from God is by faith in believing the promises of God. The little boy said in school that he saw the sun go down and the teacher corrected him and said, Honey, this is the way the universe works. The sun don't go down. And the little boy said, Oh, yes, it does. My dad said the sun goes down and I've seen it go down. It's believing God's word regardless of what the world does. Sanctify, you'll fight sin, I guess, until you leave here. Who would want to go to heaven without some scars? What was the song when the battle's over? You know, you run into, I come going down the streets of heaven or down through the field. I see some gentleman over there, and I say, how you doing? I go over here, and I say, what did you do when you were back there? He said, I was a soldier in the Army. And I'd say, oh, man, I'm going to sit down here. Tell me about what you did in your soldiering days. Well, I, I never did fight. Uh, peeled potatoes, about all. <laughs> You don't want to go there like that, right? Right? We're going to be in a fight. You're going to take some hits. You, if I could, this guy right here is walking tall. You remember the movie Walking Tall? If I could stand him up here and take his curtain, and his shirt off, you would see scars all over him where he's been cut and he's been stabbed and he's been kicked. He's been talked about. He's been beat. He's, he went through a lot of things. I'm talking about spiritually now. I'm talking about spiritually. But he's got a lot of scars on him over 35 years of putting up. There's been a lot of things happened in this church in 35 years. And I remember some of the things that's happened. You don't know how hard that is on a pastor. It's tough on a pastor when things ain't right in the church. Sanctification, God's got a way of doing it, and I think that the way it's going to work out, you're going to be just as sick of sin as you can be before you get tired with it or get done with this fight. Let me give you a couple more things. If we know God's way and choose our own way, Young person, here's a pretty girl, 
and I tell you I like her and I want to get married. And I say, how you doing? And I find out she's been married before. Ah. Oh. Lord. <laughs> uh, Lord. I, I can't. I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry. I'm going to get her and I'm going to marry her anyway. Friend, listen. <laughs> this guy said, not that one you ain't. <laughs> Guys, you've insulted his wisdom and you have messed yourself up for a lifetime. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. If we know God's way and choose our own way, we insult his wisdom. If we think he's holding back something good from us, we insult his love. Of all the things they said to him, they said he does, does miracles by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. They said everything to him they could say. Probably the hardest thing for me to read is where they wake him up. Son, listen, I come home, my wife will tell you, I've come home from work and so tired, I didn't even take my clothes off. I had cold dirt all over my face and cold dirt all over my britches. I come in, she'd say, you want something to eat? And I say, no, nah, I don't believe I do. I go straight in and get in the bed with all that black and dirt on. I was wore completely out. Jesus was asleep in the boat. I guarantee you Jesus wasn't a sluggard. If he was asleep in the boat, he had gone to the point of exhaustion and the disciples, his friends, woke him up and said, Carest thou not that we perish? Of all the things that you read in the... You don't have, they couldn't have had a clue how much that he truly loved them. If you think that he won't care... You're insulting his holiness. Friend, he's holy. And he won't change for nothing. I like watching them little kids with mom and dad. Mom, can I go to the dance? No. Dad, can I go to the dance? No. Mom, can I? Uh, they just, you know what they do? They just keep going. My mom and dad never did change their mind. But anymore, if you ask them and aggravate them long enough, they'll say, okay, go ahead and go so we can finally get some rest. God don't do that. Amen. He's immutable. He does not change. One more thing. If you think that your, your way is okay, you insult God's sovereignty. Your way is not okay. The way of the sinner is not okay. The way of the ungodly is not okay. God's way is the best way. Every time in every matter, whether we understand it or not, God's way is the best way. Amen. If you're here tonight and you've got your life in a twist, if you went aside from the counsel of God and you need to get back on God's program, I'm going to invite you to come. I'm going to ask the pastor to come if he will. And, uh, church, I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you, brother. Bless you, brother. Bless you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God's way is the best way of everything he does. If he tells us to live by faith, we need to live by faith. Abel lived by faith. Enoch lived by faith. Noah lived by faith. Abraham lived by faith. What shall I more say? Time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, and Samson. David also, and Samuel the prophets, they all live by faith. If you get saved, you get saved by faith. If you get, if you get grown in the Lord, it'll be because you was exposed to the Word of God that built your faith. Are you saved tonight? How about just bow your heads, if you will, for just a moment. I'm not going to hold you long, but I just wonder, if you're here tonight, and you'd say, Preacher, there's doubt in my life of whether I'm even saved or not. I've been there. Why don't you just slip up your hand and say, Preacher, I sure wish you'd pray for me. 
God bless you. Thank you, sir. Is there another? Slip it up and take it right back down. God bless you, honey. Bless your heart. There's two. How about you? Just slip it up and take it back down. Say, preacher, pray for me. I sure would like to know that my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Our Heavenly Father, I pray for this invitation time. Lord, you know every heart that's here. Father, you know where we fall short. Father, I pray that you would help those that lifted their hands. God, do more than lift their hands. But come to him that's able to do something about their need. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes unless we come by Jesus. Help them to come tonight in Jesus' name. All right, let's stand and sing. Number 291.